Hey there, everybody. I'm Trace Dominguez. Thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus. This is a show where we take big topics and we look at them for an extended period, over a whole week. We break them down so they can be nice and simple for you. Feel free to put on some headphones and listen in the background. This is sort of a podcast feel. I've got some notes here on my computer. So let's get started. Today, we are going to talk about humans, and we're going to go all the way back to the very beginning, our first human ancestor. Humans started millions of years ago. The first common human ancestor that we know of only weighed 1.3 ounces. It was called Purgatoris. It's the oldest known primate, and it kind of looked like a squirrel. Weird. Related to humans. It was one of those kind of... If you think of how to picture it in your head, it kind of looked like one of those tiny golden lion tamarins you might see at the zoo, but it's actually even smaller than that. So to determine what the oldest human ancestor looks like is basically, this is our oldest primate ancestor. Primates are, you know, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species, that breakdown of life and taxonomy, which not everybody always agrees with, but it's kind of contentious, but in our order of primate, you would have mammals with a collarbone, forward-facing eyes, grasping hands, and two different types of teeth. So like molars and canines and incisors and all of these. Uh, the family, which is hominine, hominide, hominide, that's what it is, <laughs> is upright posture, a larger brain, stereo vision, so also two eyes looking forward, flat face, and differentiation of hands and feet. That one's important, because if you think about some primates don't have a difference between their grasping hands and their grasping feet, whereas we do. So that would put us under hominidae. Then we've got the genus of Homo, which is an S-curved spine. If you think of an uh, X-rayed human from the side, the spine kind of bows out a little bit at the upper back and then bows in in the lower back. That's what makes us human, because it helps us stand upright and straight. So if we break that down, we've got the order of primate, we've got the family of hominidae, which I hope I'm pronouncing correctly, we've got the genus of homo, and then we have us, the sapiens. We've got high foreheads, we have a prominent chin, maybe some are more prominent than others, and then we have a thin skull, which is interesting to me. I don't know why our skulls are thinner. Maybe we're using more brain capacity, so we need a larger space inside the skull. I'm not sure. Uh, then at the end, there also is Homo sapien sapien, but we'll get back to that. Um, they found other Homo sapien-like species throughout the years. But our oldest known ancestor is this squirrel-like thing. But we've also found other ancestors since then. For example, 4.4 million years ago was Artipithecus ramidus commonly known in pop culture as Artie. Maybe you remember hearing about Artie. That was our last common ancestor that we know of. Between humans, us today, modern humans, homo sapiens, and chimpanzees. That was, uh, common ancestor doesn't mean that chimpanzees disappeared and became something else. It means that at some point, two different mutations happened, and Artie, maybe, maybe there's something in between Artie we don't know about, um, was one of the ancestors of one of those mutated lines and became humans, and chimpanzees continued along another separate mutated line. So that was probably, uh, we found this 4.4, we found this, it was a 4.4 million year old fossil, but this probably happened, this uh, split between 5 and 10 million years ago. Artie is an almost complete skeleton. They found rib bones. They found all sorts of different parts of the skeleton, as opposed to some discoveries where an uh, anthropologist or a, a paleontologist might only find like one bone for a dinosaur or for an organism of some kind. This they found an almost complete skeleton, which was pretty cool. So Artipithecus ramidus was a tree and land dwelling ancestor of humans. So working forward a little bit more, then we get, 3.2 million years ago, we get Lucy, which is Australopithecus afarensis. She was very famous when found, and that was an upright walking and bipedal species, which is probably the first thing, or first time we've seen that in our history. So if we've got these ancient squirrel things, we've got Artie, and then we've got Lucy, that's still 3.2 million years ago. That's a long time. The first human in that what is specifically, okay, this is a human. This is that missing link that people tend to talk about. There's no such thing as the missing link. It's a slow progression via 
basic genetic mutations over time. If you want to know more about genes, you can watch our whole series on genetics. We've got a lot of them. You can watch those. It's pretty awesome. But honestly, the first human that we know of, changing constantly as we find new things, mostly in fossils from East Africa, which is how we know that humans came out of Africa and spread throughout the world. But we'll get to that in a little bit. Some people like to think that humans kind of just sprang into being, maybe from maybe in a garden or wherever else. Africa is very nice, but again, we eventually left it. And actual evidence of this after Artie and Lucy, we get to Homo habilis, which is two million years ago. Then Homo erectus, which is one million years ago. We're standing even more upright. We're much more mobile. We have a uh, slowly more, again, thinning skull, more prominent chins, better spines, better feet for walking that are separate from our hands. Our brains are getting bigger. Then Homo heidelbergensis, which was 500,000 years ago. They found fossils of Homo heidelbergensis. Then they get, one of my favorites, Homo sapien neanderthalensis which is a sapien, as you may have noticed. They were so similar to us that we still talk about them a lot today. Those were Neanderthals or Neanderthals. I prefer thal, some people prefer tall, they're both correct. That is why we are also now considered today the Homo sapien sapien. That came around 200,000 years ago. They are considered modern humans. Welcome, this is us now. We've lost a lot of our fur, some of us. We've got a thinner skull, a nice big brain, stereo eyeballs, and a whole bunch of other cool stuff. You remember that chart that you see a lot, where it's like a little chimp and then like sort of upright primate and then like a more upright primate and then like a human and then like, I don't know, something that's supposed to be funny? That chart is kind of correct, right? We went from a little squirrel thing though, not so much the chimp thing, squirrel thing and then slowly getting more upright and better at using our bodies until uh, 200,000 years ago, this popped out. Weird. Thank you guys for watching this episode about the history of all things human in brief. If you cannot wait for more episodes, you should watch last week's episodes about the senses. Believe me, there are more than five, way more. If you want to see more episodes about our human history and ancestry and going forward from here, there's more this week. Keep tuning in, subscribe for more Test 2 Plus, and we will see you tomorrow.